Pastor Sam, thank you so much for coming on and being with us. Uh, God bless you. This is the next edition of Rad Talk. You know, like TED Talk, but it's Rad Talk. Hey, I like that. Regan Anthony D'Onofrio, Rad so Talk. This is so cool. I'm trying the to whole get acronym it. stuff. I'm trying around. to get it together, yeah. Regan Anthony D'Onofrio, Rad Lord, Talk. Lord, help us. <laughs> uh, we are here with the anointed man of God for the hour. He has a now word in his heart and in his mouth. And, um, I mean, I can't tell you, really, it is just an honor to have you, to be with you, to be connected to you. I feel that my wife loves me better because I know you. I mean, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's just everything. <laughs> That's awkwardly beautiful, <laughs> I think. <laughs> <laughs> it really, it really, I mean, I, I really can't even put into words, really, just being connected to you and, and being able to call you and text you and... To, to, to see what God is doing with your life and to learn from you, is it's truly an honor, and, and thank you, well, really. You're, you're more than kind. I was telling Josh, who's been my, my, my partner in grace for like 25 years here, I was telling Josh of, of not, o- not only my personal affinity and love, but our churches, our family towards you. This, I t- Josh even said it actually, Pastor Sanders, there's some, there's some connectivity between y'all connect at a different level. From the first day we met, you know, you had me at hello. This is, we're straight up married. I was just want you to know. No, no, we're, we're not married. Not, no, not we. Hold on. Are we out of here? Not we. This is going to go viral. I'm married to Eva. He's married. Jacqueline. Jacqueline, yeah. Okay. All right, take two. Go. <laughs> but, man, there's a connection. Like, I know that I know that I know that God, what God has for you, through you, it's totally amazing. There's a harvest in Long Island. There's a harvest in the New York metropolitan yes, area. Sir. Yes, it's sir. worth the drive, by the way. Upper room, even if you're in the city, it's worth the drive. There's an anointing and a grace in this house that's multi generational with the bishop. Yes, and now sir. that mantle on you. Thank you, Jesus. And, and the bishop and I both know that God's going to do greater things through you. It's just a biblical promise. And I'm just, I'm in love with the fact that God has a harvest of your name on it and a destiny that can't be stopped. And I'm just blessed to be connected with you, man. Thank you. Thank you for your kind words in Jesus' name. Let it be done, his will. Uh, We have, I just have one incredibly large topic that I want to talk to you about. Um, The Yankees bullpen? (laughs) It's better than ever. I'm going to tell you. Look, this year coming up, listen, arguably the best bullpen. Right, Josh? The best bullpen ever. I mean, think about it. From the best fifth inning all the way down to the ninth. We, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, this is, is this what we... Are we going to sign Harper? That's the question. I don't think we are. I mean, it, you know, it, it, the Steinbrenner sons, not necessarily dad. Dad would have done a Reggie Jackson yeah, purchase, He would have right? signed both. He yes, would have signed Machado. Machado and Harper. Yeah, but that's... The, the sons are not... And God bless the sons. They're more... Business savvy in a 21st century reality. Yeah. The, so, pr- the problem is the, the, the last three years of those contracts, it's, you, you're paying for nothing. And you're paying them $30 million for nothing. You want John Carlos Stanton to actually start hitting like 75,000 home runs, right? <laughs> and batting over 300, right? And not striking out every other. So you want that. You want Aaron Judge, who's beautiful. You want him to be healthy. Correct. Did we just go into a sports analysis of the Yankees we, right now? We did. did we did. We did. Because that's what Rad does. <laughs> That's why we're rad. Rad talk. Rad talk. Anything is on the table. I love it. <laughs> this is brilliant. We have to do this like on a daily basis. Like. Okay. Oh, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna help our myself and our viewers unpack really tough issues. You know, so 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 there are many things that Jesus spoke about in during his time during his his three-and-a-half-year ministry here on the earth. There were things he spoke directly to. But then there are some things that we're dealing in our contemporary society with that Jesus never spoke to, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and so, so I think one of, one of the hardest things to do, first of all, in understanding a biblical truth is to, first of all, unpack what the original intended audience was supposed to hear to understand their culture and then repack it within our contemporary society, you know? And um, my question to you is, how can we distill the word of God, the eternal principles of God, but not make it uh, powerless to the point where 
those truths don't affect us right now? How do we answer contemporary questions with biblical principles? All, every cultural contextualization with eternal absolutes. Right. That's the word of God. Right. So every metaphor, every parable was culturally contextualized based on 2,000 years ago, 4,000 years ago, and cultural contextualization, but all of them had an eternal absolute. Hence, it was the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. The Holy, the Holy Spirit is not temporal. The Holy Spirit is not limited to our space-time continuum for all the Trekkies out there. <laughs> the Holy Spirit transcends that. Right. So the Holy Spirit knew right. that you and I, in 2019, would be reading the Scripture. Yeah. Now, if Jesus would be alive today and the New Testament would be written today, I promise you, you would hear stuff like Internet and Google searches. Definitely. And iPhones. They use things like boats and nets. Yeah. And sycamore trees because it was germane and applicable to an agricultural society. Correct. Two thousand years ago. Yes, sir. So metaphors were applied accordingly, right? Mm -hmm. So it's it's just cultural contextualization for the purpose of presenting eternal absolutes. My point being, everything that needs to be addressed today in culture and society can be extrapolated legitimately without stretch from the Word of God. What am I saying? The Bible speaks to everything that's going on today, without exception, mm. period. Yes, we sir. don't even have to stretch for it. Name one topic, and I'll show you biblical, substan biblical, biblically substantiated truth that emerges from the Word of God to address whatever issue is taking place in society today. Let, let's, can we dive in? Go. Let's dive in. Uh, let's talk about racism. You know, for many people, you know, I, I'm not sure if the average you know, Christian could really understand the kind of racism that actually took place within the Bible, uh, oh, right. especially between the Jews and the Gentiles and this holy gospel. I mean, it wasn't until Acts chapter 10 that a Gentile was actually re received the word, which who was Cornelius, and Peter tried three times not to do it. it you know, let's talk about racism. Racism <laughs> confronted, and you're, you're, give, you're, you're, you're giving the meta-narrative of racism, the quintessential example in the New Covenant, which was the Gentiles versus the Jews. I have even a, a more Jesus-applicable three-and-a-half-year-of-ministry example. Samaritans. The Samaritans. Come on now. The entire time you read the Samaritan, I'm tracking it's an you. issue of racism. Yes, sir. It's and all Jesus saying, and it, by the way, it's a Samaritan woman. And by, it's That's the right. whole notion of he is, right. having he is having an interaction. He's speaking into the life of a Samaritan woman. Unbelievable. Uh, you know, give, me, give me something to drink at yeah. Jacob's Well. Yeah. This crazy story of a Samaritan woman. Jesus confronted racism constantly. Mm. Racism. He overcame the racist barriers of his day and age for the purpose of showing us one thing. Every single human being is created in the image of God. Amen. You all carry my image. I, my purpose is, in the words of Jesus, it is my will that all be saved. That's right. Everyone be saved. So he transcends that. The Apostle Paul in the book of Galatians, let's do away with nomenclatures and descriptors that divide us. What do you mean? Jew, Gentile, a slave, free man, man, woman? No, 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 no. New Forget creature. about the labels. In Christ, yeah. this radical idea that in Christ there is perfect equality. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So the Bible is full of pushback. Peter mm. had some issues. We know this. Yeah. Peter, you alluded to the whole Gentile Jewish thing. Peter had some serious issues. He had more issues. He, he cut Malchus's ear off at the well, garden yes, against Because uh, Peter had a little bit of Puerto Rican in him. Took out, <laughs> took out a switchblade. Oh, hey. Would you be my Peter, sir? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. West Side Story. When you're, when you're a jet, you're a jet all the way. From so, your first cigarette to, to your, your last, last dying day. day. <laughs> but um, that, that just happened, by the way. And it's not scripted. So, no, racism. The, the idea that there's racism today... Simple stuff. Let's just let's just hit it, right? Is there racism today? Yes. Yes. Will there always be racism? Yes. Yes. Because there's always going to be sin yeah. until Jesus redeems it all. Yeah. Until the full redemption of all things, we're going to confront racism. And it's and there's racism in, in all segments of society. Racism is not just one race towards another. There are racist attitudes and, right. and inclinations in almost every single ethnic group. And we have to confront it in the name of Jesus, mm. repudiate it. The answer to racism in America, by the way, the Republicans will never solve it. The Democrats will never solve it. No, the donkey sir. and the elephant can't solve it. Come on. The only answer is the lamb. The church is the answer. And what kind of church? Here it is. 
multi-ethnic, spirit-empowered, Christ-centered, Bible-based churches. You, that, that's the answer. The answer is if we can worship together, we can win together. That's right. But as long as we continue to have a white church, a black church, a Come Latino on, church, Pastor. an Asian church, we're never going to overcome the devil of racism in America. Hallelujah. It, it wasn't, it's the church at Antioch that we should pattern ourselves after, not the Jerusalem church. Completely correct. At which Antioch was the first time that Christians was brought up as a term, because uh, up until that point, Christianity, as we know it, was a continuation of the Jewish faith. Exactly. Right, a, Ju a Jewish faith. We, call, we actually call our main campus in Sacramento Antioch, for that matter. Yes, sir. For that reason. Yes, sir. Now, 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 let me tell you what else is very controversial. What you know, we have a problem in skinny jeans. And yes, skinny jeans is a, is very controversial. Not everyone should wear them. No. <laughs> Next point. Go. I'm just being practical. Just if... no, no names being mentioned. Uh, sir, did please. I mention a name? We're gonna change the name to protect the innocent here. In there, we're not is. gonna. We're not gonna do that. Yes. What was I saying? I was saying something. You just threw me there. You mentioned Billy McGillicuddy. I'm sorry. No names mentioned. <laughs> that's, uh, that's... Uh, yes. This the the problem, the problem that we have concerning racism, is the church is very divided on her perspective especially as it pertains to modern issues. The church sounds democratic. The church sounds Republican. The, the, the church ha does not identify with her origin. She identifies with her political party. Sad. She identifies with her ethnicity. And Pathetic. What, 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 how can we help the church to become... Now, I, I want to suggest this to you. The, the miracle of the incarnation of Christ is the fact that Christ came in the flesh. Yes. But the onward miracle of the incarnation of Christ is that you and I could become like Christ. Christ in us, the hope of glory. The hope of glory. That is the only way that we are going to be able to not identify with, as you said, the donkey or the but, elephant. But the lamb. But the lamb. The lion of Judah. Speak to that, please. It's, it's the number one dividing issue in the church. What is preventing John 17, 21, the prayer of Jesus? Make them one. Let them be one as you and I are one. Yes, sir. Speaking to the Father. It's politics. The number one issue dividing the church in America today is political. Wow. It's not cultural. It's more political. If we're more donkey, we're going to aim this way. If we're more elephant, we're going to aim this way. And it's the elephant and the donkey dividing us. We have to do away with it. We mm. have to be ape. And it's, I'm not saying, Pastor Sam, you're telling me to avoid politics. No. I am telling you never to sacrifice your vertical on a horizontal altar. Amen. Your vertical trumps your horizontal. Yes, sir. You're, I am a Christian before I am. Listen, here's my order. I'm a Christian. I'm an American. I'm of Hispanic descent. Yankee fan. So you get this in order here. My point to you is my Christianity trumps everything. It leads the way. There are people that wake up in the morning and you see yourself primarily by the color of your skin. Biblically speaking, you have to see yourself primarily as a child of God. Right. Your skin is a blessing. Diversity is beautiful. The, the, the mosaic, the tapestry of God's creation, God made you black for a purpose, white for a purpose, brown for a purpose, like me, confused for a purpose, whatever it may be. <laughs> but it doesn't define you above all. What defines you is the blood of Jesus, Amen. the redemptive work of Christ. We have to do away and push back on this political divide. We really do. It, it, In our church, we don't do politics. No, sir. But we address things that have to be addressed yes. with prophetic utterance. Yes. So we don't sacrifice truth. And can I can I tell you what aggravates what I see aggravates the um, the religious more than anything? What's that? Is when they feel that their answer isn't answered the way they want their answer answered. Uh, that's my optic again. I mean, it, it's, it's crazy, <laughs> right? But, but but Jesus did it every All time. single time. He irritated people. The 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 a quintessential point. Or one of the one of the the for me, the one of the hardest questions Jesus had to answer, one of the hardest situations he came into was the woman that was found in the act of adultery. Right. He says, you know, he, he's got Pharisees saying, Well, the law of Moses says right, this, right. what are you gonna do? Now Jesus is Jesus is in a place. He says, Well, he can't con come against who he is, but at the same time, he's come to bring grace and truth. He's not come to bring the law. He's come to bring a new to dispensation. To fulfill the law. Right, to right. fulfill the law and to bring a new dispensation, a new era That's right. that no one has ever seen before. So what does Jesus do? He waits until there's no accusers by asking a question. He answers a question with a question. He says, 
who among you is without sin? And here, the rocks start falling down. He looks around, and according to the law, there have to be two or three witnesses to establish a thing. He says, where are your accusers? I, even if I were to say it, I can't, I can't make this happen. No witnesses. Go your way and send them. He was able to answer the question. He was able to fulfill who he was completely. He was able to fulfill the law of God, and he was able to fulfill the love of God. How can we be like that? It's, it's intentional. It's daily. It's pushing back on descriptors, nomenclatures. We need to understand there's a spiritual dynamic out there. The enemy is at play. The devil would love to keep the church fragmented and divided and keep us confused. If we understand that there's a diabolic, I met with a leader of a, let's just say, an ideology that runs counter to biblical worldview. Mm. And the leader met with me and a group of other, about 25 other prominent evangelical leaders and said the following, hey, by the way, guys, the reason why we are succeeding and you're failing is because we walk in lockstep. We're perfectly united and you guys are so fragmented. Wow. Then he looked at us and said, if you guys would ever get your act together, nothing on this planet would be able to stop you. Wow. We're divided. Wow. It's the enemy strategy. So we have to pursue righteousness. We have to articulate truth with love. And we have to do it in a way outside the confines of political, myopic worldview thinking. That's right. It was the Pharisees wanted Jesus to answer who he was based on their little box. And, and I think, you know, sometimes people would say, well, that's not answering directly. That's not giving us a direct answer. You're skirting this you're saying you're not saying exactly what needs to be said there but if we really look at Jesus he didn't skirt the answers he didn't he didn't dodge the questions what he did is he was able to stay true to himself and i think i think we need to find a way to stay true to him and what is what is himself meaning who is jesus so he said explicitly i am the way mm. the truth mm. and the life mm. The same John writing later on, much older in age, God is love. Mm. Way, truth, life, love. That's who he is. Yes, sir. That's what we have to be. Everything we do has to be that balance of the way pointing to the exclusive, the only way to salvation, the truth, life, and love. If everything we say somehow encapsulates these four realities, these absolutes, these truths, we can change the world. We have to be careful. If all we do is talk about love without truth, we're hippies. Yes, sir. <laughs> My dad would like that because he was oh, a hippie. Are, is hippie. <laughs> <laughs> and, and all, and all, right. and if all right. we do is speak truth without love, we're never going to reach anyone. Right. How, how do you deliver someone you offend? Yeah. You can't so do it. it. It's love, truth. It's pointing to the way and always talking about that John 10, 10 principle of abundant life. Mm. Amen. Well, well if, if, solved if, every if, world problem today. That's it. All you have to do is tune into Rad Talks, and you will have every answer you ever need. Yeah, but I like Pastor Regan <laughs> has Beats headset. I don't even. I have like Walmart brand <laughs> JBLs, sir. Oh, sorry, JBL. JBLs. Uh, I'm just like going like notice <laughs> 24 karat gold Beats, and I have like blue. Target purchased. <laughs> Nothing about Target. God bless your Target. I'm just thank, saying. Thank God you changed that bathroom situation a few years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I, I shop. I shop at Target now. I didn't shop at Target then. God bless. Then God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> well, Pastor Sam, uh, if if there's, I'll just leave one last thought. Although what you just said was profound. Just one last thought with the listeners and the watchers, please. It's the outline that guides me every single day. I want you to remember this. Today's complacency is tomorrow's captivity. Mm. You are what you tolerate. There is no such animal as comfortable Christianity. Truth must never be sacrificed on the altar of political, cultural, or sexual expediency. And while we are all waiting for Jesus to come down, Jesus is waiting for his church to stand up. Amen. Stand up and change your world. God bless you. Thank you so much. Pastor Sam, thank you so much. Wow, that was awesome. I could do that all day with you. We could do a sport. We could do we could do this. We really can. We could do everything. This is brilliant.